Hello everyone and um, welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, this is sort of something new that I've been given a thought about for a really long time now. Um, we're in the business of running a restaurant, um, operating a restaurant. So um, indirectly, we're in the business of training staff, um, be it training staff in the kitchen, um, training staff in the front of house. So um, I find myself repeating myself all over again for the same thing many, many times over. So it would be a lot easier if we could just, you know, make a video and then whenever you need, you can come, always come back and refer to it. That's my dog barking right there. Um, come back to it and then refer to it and hopefully you'll be able to learn and practice something new and then be able to use them in your everyday work. So, <clears throat> first thing that I would like, um, this is actually a video very specific to the kitchen. Um, the first thing that anyone should learn before learning how to work in the kitchen is, I would believe, I would say it's definitely sharpening a knife. It's one of the most essential thing that you have to learn before you could actually start working in the kitchen. Um, you might see that <clears throat> this is a very similar knife that we use in a restaurant uh, in Harrisdale. Um, this method works the same way for any kind of knife, be it a kitchen knife, chef knife, uh, a small paring knife, anything that will work. Um, different techniques might be required for the different shapes that you find on different knives, but the general idea are still the same. Um, first off, we're going to just start by soaking up the stone. Um, Actually, before that, um, before we start doing the tutorial on how to sharpen a knife, um, a few couple of things we want to get out of the way. Um, why are sharp knives important? Um, there's a couple of reasons that's been said by many times by professional chefs, um, experts in the kitchen. Um, sharp knives generally is the knife. I mean, I mean, a knife is the tool that you use in the kitchen, and a sharp tool are safe tools. That's the first thing. Um, it's a little bit hard to understand the idea behind sharp tools being safe tools, but it is true and it has been proven so as well. And a sharp knife will help your whatever ingredients that you're cutting last longer, they stay fresh for longer. Um, if you'll be cutting vegetable, you'll bruise them less as well. If you cut protein, if you cut fish or whatever, uh, it helps them to last longer as well, no matter what you do with a sharp knife. All right. Um, First thing we're going to do right here is always before we start as you can see this is a very similar stone in fact this stone has been um, abused in the past and you can see a lot of staining from um, basically sharpening knives that has been stained with a lot of uh, adhesive materials um, be it um, tapes or like glue of some sorts so you can see like that bit where it's actually not shiny that part has actually been destroyed but nonetheless even with a stone that's been badly abused like this I'll be able to hopefully prove it to you that it works and it's gonna you know basically be able to help you to sharpen a knife no matter what kind of equipment that you have with you uh, in this case this is a quite a badly abused stone um, it is uh, what we call as a whetstone. Um, we have two grits. We have uh, 240 grits on the blue side and then a 1000 grit on the white side. Generally, the idea behind this is that you will start on the rougher side, which is the 240 grit, and then you go on, continue on uh, polishing the edge on the 1000 grit. Um, depending on how dull the knives are, uh, you might or might not need the 240 grit side. Uh, you can just, you might be able to just go straight to the 1000 grit. It really depends on how dull your knives are when you start off with. Um, the 240 side of the stone is generally known as the reprofiling side of the stone, where, you know, if you have a knife that's really bit up, out of shape, and you got to reprofile the edge, you start with the 240 side and then you continue on with the 1000 side. Um, Right here, I have with me some magazine, just a piece of uh, paper from the magazine that I re just ripped off. Um, we can just test the sharpness right now. This is pretty sharp. 
I've sharpened this knife previously with the same stone and yep, they are very sharp. I'm gonna on purpose dial them right now. Before I do that, where is the rubber piece? Here I go. So most of the stones that you'll be using have this kind of uh, rubber piece to help the stone stay in place so that they don't move around. That's that's really helpful when you're trying to sharpen knives, especially really, really dull knives. It's going to help you a lot. Uh, you don't want the stone to run around and move around when you're trying to sharpen a knife. That's always the first thing. All right. This is the 240 side of the stone right now. This might, you know, it's pretty damn stupid to do this, but just for the sake of proving to you that you'll be able to do it no matter what. We're going to dial it right away. And right away you can tell this should be very very dull right now because it's just not as sharp as it's literally dull right now at this point right we're just gonna do on the 1000 side just to see if that's actually cuts through the material um, just know that Different knives come with different materials. Um, knives like this come with a high carbon steel, we call it, and they are generally very soft steel. They sharpen a lot easier. They don't last as long as any kind of German steels or Japanese knife, but it's very easy to sharpen. That's the benefit of it. Um, we'll just put the stone right in here. Normally I will have two things with me when I try to sharpen a knife, a bowl of water. In a restaurant you could just use a tub filled up with water and the other one is just you know a shallow tub where you can actually soak up the stone, pretty much the entire stone. The main idea is that you need to hold your knife in a very steady angle and keep it that way the entire time that you're sharpening them. Um, you don't need to put down a lot of force at all. I'm just going to put these knives away. Or actually you know hurt me or whatever um normally what i do is that just before i go to sharpen i will just take grab a, a splash of water splash right on top and then off i go um you want to just sort of feel the edge of the knife and sort of give it hold it in the same angle of the saber edge of the knife and then that's how you're gonna know that you're in the right angle Normally, a kitchen knife only require about a 20 degrees to a 17 degrees angle for sharpening. Um, different material might require different kind of uh, edge. Different knives might require different kind of edge, but most of the kitchen knife, 20 degrees is what it is. So as you can see right here, it is still a bit wet over here. That's nice and creepy right now. What you can see happening right now is that um, pieces uh, of the material, chunks of the metal bits have been taken off from the knife right away. Um, what I do is just, just add more water that's going to help um, sort of uh, lubricate the surface of the stone as we sharpen the knife. I'm not gonna slush away, I'm not gonna like wipe away any of the metal shavings just because those shavings actually helps with sharpening the knives as well, believe it or not. Um, so keep it there, don't wash it away, just keep it there. But as you go, just add a bit more water every time. help by moving away. Let's just give it a wipe and try again. I'm not sure if you can see it but I'm really just trying to keep a very constant angle as I sharpen. What you really want to avoid is moving the knife up and down like that. Just really keep it at a steady angle and just not too hard, just giving it a very soft pressure and just sharpen away from the edge. You want to do a motion um, you, you press down on both the going in and out motion throughout the entire length of the knife.
Be sure to keep the steady angle as you sharpen. Just gonna add a bit more water right here and then I'm gonna go on the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing. Right, now we have done both sides. Usually, um, most people, when they sharpen the knife, that's the end of the process of sharpening the knife. But um, what I normally do, just to give it a very fine edge, just to just as a final touch to the knife, is that will actually uh, imitate a stropping pattern, but without you actually using a stropper. Um, traditionally, um, normally people would use sort of like a leather strop to give it uh, uh, polish to the edge so that you know the, the edge actually reaches way above 1000 grit um, but in this case we're just trying to make the knife sharp enough so that we could use it you know to do our everyday job in the kitchen not trying to you know uh, do fancy sharpening videos with tomatoes or whatever it's just so that it's practically sharp so that we could use it in the kitchen um, so this is the technique that I usually do um, the same way that you would do on both sides but instead of going this side and this side I'm just gonna do one slide one stroke on each side of the knife alternatively what happens is that as you sharpen on one side of the knife your edge of the knife tends to go on this side if you're sharpening on that side and then if you go sharpening on the other side and then the edge will go that side again so if you just stop and end on one side the edge of your knife just gonna look like that and that's not a very sharp edge what we want to do right now is basically bring that edge to the center so that both sides are symmetry that way we get a really good sharp edge This stage, I believe we're pretty much done. Just gonna you know, rinse off any metal shaving on the surface of the knife. Give it a good wipe. As always, just like similar as when you work in the kitchen, in the restaurant, uh, always give your work area a good clean after you use them. Now, you won't be able to test the sharp mode of the knife when it's wet. It's just because how the water is coating the edge of the surface molecularly um, so yeah just give it a good wipe so that it's dry in a restaurant you'll probably be doing this with a paper towel or something let's grab a new sheet of paper from the magazine and moment of truth let's see if this is sharp enough now my friend that is a very very sharp knife right there